So before we go any further into the low time frame work, I think it's important to talk about the psychological implications of low time frame trading. Trading on the low time frames has a lot more mental pressure than the high time frames. And the reason for that is simply because the markets move fast, you take profits quickly, you take losses quickly, and everything happens very rapidly compared to the higher time frame work. So let's say, for example, then you are looking at a buy from this zone on a high time frame. So we have this little zone down here. We see price comes into it. Let's just say, for example's sake, you do take this trade. Your stop loss is down here and your target is all the way up here. Now, this is going to be quite a low stress trade because you're going to get triggered in. Your stop loss is 20 or more pips. Let's even say you clear the low with it. Your stop loss is 25 pips. Your target is 140 pips. So it's going to take a while for this to turn out either as a win or a loss, which kind of means it just floats in the background and you don't have to think about it too much. And you're going to see these slow moving candles as well. It's just quite slow paced and relaxed. So when you're in a trade like this, you don't have too much stress. You don't have too much pressure. You can just come back and check it every few hours and actually manage the trade accordingly. Now, you also have the confidence that you're trading with high time frame zones. And as most people expect, high time frame zones carry more weight. High time frame zones are more accurate. This is another one of the big psychological problems when you go to low time frames. You often think the structure can't be trusted and the zones might not be very strong. So as you can imagine, high time frame trading is a lot less stressful than the low time frame trading is. And if we look at this trade here that we've just marked up, we'd say the entry around here to where it is now, that is 22 hours. So this is essentially a whole day of price action uh, actually playing out, right? So it's very slow moving and relaxed. You can just let this thing go. Now on the flip side, if we go down to the very low time frames and we have a look at a low time frame example, let's say that we actually are selling into the structure here on Euro USD on these low time frames. When you get into a position, for example, a position here, following this break of structure down, lower high, and you're selling into that. When you get into this position, you are going to see the markets moving very quickly. Every one of these candles is a minute of price action. And your stop loss is one pip, two pips, three pips, four pips, five pips. What this can mean is, what this means is you're either going to win or lose your trade in a very small amount of time. Now, when a trade's moving against you, it's obviously quite stressful because you can get stopped out instantly and you can take your full one hour loss, whether it's 1% or 0.5%. And when the trade moves in profit, it can also be stressful because of how fast the market is moving. You never know if the market's going to reverse on you. And for example, let's say you're in this trade and it's running profitably down to this point. When you see these large impulsive candles, you may be inclined to actually exit the position in a little bit of a panic. So the low time frames bring more panic and they give you less time to think and less time to react to actually what's happening in the market. If you get clear reversal signals on a high time frame chart, you can then assess the situation, think about it for a little bit and potentially get out in profit or work out that actually it's worth leaving on because nothing major has actually changed. The issue there on the low time frames is you don't have as much time to think about it. Now, when these two big bullish candles come in, that's literally just two minutes of price action. And when you see price trading up here, you have literally minutes or seconds to think about what you're going to do. And this is what actually leads a lot of people to close trades early and actually panic sell. Now, if you close this trade early and you panic closed, you're actually going to miss out on quite a large profit when the market does run all the way down to this point, for example, and then down to this point and this point and so on. So there are psychological implications that really do play a heavy part in the low time frame trading. Now, the other one is the zones and the structure. A lot of people think on the low time frames that structure and zones and everything around the price action is not valid and not really to be trusted. So when you see a supply zone, you may not trust it on the low time frames. When you're on the high time frames, you trust it because it is a large weighted area that obviously carries a lot of weight in the markets. Now, the thing is here, the low time frame structure, zones, etc., do all react in a very good way, very similarly to how the high time frame stuff does as well. So if we look at the structure here, and I'll show you this as an example, we can see that we had obviously a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low here. So that's the initial break. And then we pull back in, we form a lower high in this supply area and then sell off. And then from there, we can see we are clearly in a downtrend. So then we have a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, but then this comes in and sweeps out the equal highs that we have just here. So you can see the liquidity is also very valid on the low time frames. And then after another sell off, we actually do make a push back up. And what we do is fill an imbalance here. And then price trades through the imbalance into this supply area and then actually sells off. 
So as you can see, all of the concepts we've spoken about so far on the high time frames also work just as well on the low time frames. We have structure, we have supply and demand, we have liquidity, and we have market efficiency. All of these things working just as well on the low time frames as they do on the high time frames. It can be hard to get your head around and it can be hard to trust the markets, but testing and actually getting some live market experience after going through this section of the course will definitely put you on the right track. Now, one tip, the biggest tip I have when you're moving to the low time frames is when you're feeling a little bit nervous, a little bit tricky about the low time frames, think of them as if they were the high time frames. So when you're looking at the one minute or five minute time frames, pretend that they're the four hour chart. If you tell yourself that they work exactly the same way as the four hour time frame, and you mark up the structure and you plan and place trades the same way you would if you were trading the hourly or the four hour time frame, this gives you an immense confidence boost. And that's actually where you begin to open your eyes to the fact that, okay, these low time frames, even though they move fast, they do work in essentially the same way because they do. If we follow this, we can see a very clear trend similar to what we may see on a high time frame. The start point is this lower high, and then we have the lower low structure, lower high, lower low, sweep of liquidity, take out the imbalance, hit supply, sell off. Then we form a clear lower low. Then the market comes back up to fill the inefficiency, trades into this supply area, and then sells off again into a new lower low. And then the market pulls back to fill the inefficiency and trade into this supply area and then sells off and so on and so on and so on. So you can see that the structure does react very, very well on the low time frames, and all of the concepts we've learned about do work very well here as much as they do on the one hour, the four hour, the daily, and so on. So just to recap then, what are the psychological implications of low time frame trading? Well, the three major implications are, number one, we have rapid moving markets. This means you don't have much time to react to what the markets are doing. And this requires obviously very good management and very systematic management. So you don't dive in and be too discretionary and end up closing trades early out of fear. The second one is fast losses and wins. This is obviously going to bring up fear and anxiety when you're trading because losing or making a lot of money in a fast period of time can stress you out. If you lose, you obviously just lost, you know, 0.5% or 1% in literally a matter of minutes, potentially sometimes even seconds. And if you win, you have the anxiety that the market's going to turn around on you and you may want to get out very, very quickly. Or you may see a large profit on your screen and just close the trade without letting it fulfill the target. So fast losses and wins brings in the fear and anxiety aspects. And then the final and one of the biggest ones actually is the lack of trust for low time frame concepts. So when you move from high time frame to low time frame trading, sometimes you're not going to trust market structure, market efficiency, supply and demand, liquidity, all of these things you are going to actually, you know, overlook and not really trust so much. You may see a real valid trade, but not take it because you're too fixated on the high time frame view of the market. And you may not actually trust what you're doing here on the low time frames. So for sure, these three things are going to play a part in your psychology. What I would like you to do is make sure that when you start feeling these emotions, you note them down, you journal them, and you then can work towards overcoming them. Now, what are my three major pointers for overcoming them? Well, for the first one, the fast moving markets and a lack of time to react, what you want to do here is make sure you have a system in place. Obviously, we are going to talk through the system. We've spoken so far about the high time frame. We're going to spoke through the low time frame, but you need a system for execution. You need a system for stops, targets, and you also need a system for trade management, stop loss trailing, scaling into moves and so on. When you have a system, you don't have to react in rapid time to the markets because you can just follow the system on every trade. You don't have to think, do I take partials here? Do I close my position here? Is the market reversing? You can simply get in, manage your stops, manage your targets, and then let the trade run. Sometimes it's going to get stopped out. Sometimes discretion would have helped you, but most of the time coming in discretionary and actually early closing trades, moving stops, uh, you know, all these things, moving targets are going to affect you long run. So the biggest way to get around the rapid moving market and the lack of time to react is going to just be to implement a system. And that is all going to be covered in the next few videos. For the second tip, fast losses and wins, bringing up fear and anxiety, you need to just prepare for this. The best way to prepare for this is to come into the markets with scaled down risk. So maybe when you're first practicing in the live market, risk 0.25% or something very low like that. By risking small amounts, the stress is not going to be so bad. And then if you want to, you can then start to up that to around 0.5% risk and trade that way instead. Over time, you'll build the resistance to that fear and anxiety because you'll see many fast losses and you'll see many fast wins having played out. And over time, hopefully, you'll see that your results are positive. 
Okay, obviously it's going to take back testing, it's going to take practice, and it's going to take experience. But over time, you will get a feel for those fast losses and wins, and the fear and anxiety will be all but clouded over by your experience. And for the last one, the no trust in low time frame concepts, this one is completely natural. It just comes from, you know, moving from the high time frames. I think we're all educated that the low time frames are inaccurate, the low time frames are messy. To some degree, that's true. They do have more noise than the higher time frame markets, but they are definitely tradable. So to build trust for the low time frame concepts, all you need to do is a lot of backtesting. Now we do have a backtesting chapter after the technical chapter, which you can go into, and you're going to learn how to backtest your trade there. And that is where you're really going to start to build the trust for the low time frame concepts. Now you're also going to build the trust through watching this course because you're going to see the low time frame concepts continually winning. Obviously, I'll also show some losses as well, but you're going to see the low time frame concepts in action in the way that I just showed you here, where the trend structure and the liquidity, market efficiency, supply and demand all worked out very nicely. So we simply view this market the same way we would a high time frame trade, and you're going to build that eye for the market over the next few videos and then over your own personal backtesting and market experience. So those are just the three psychological concepts that I thought we had to talk about before we move into the low time frame processes. The reason being, if you are not in tune with all of these things, when you come to the live markets, you're going to run into these problems and you're not going to have them pre-planned and you're not going to know how to get around them. So now that we have that out of the way, we are actually going to dive into the low time frame trading process. I'm going to show you various ways to trade standard intraday trading in the London and New York session and also how to take advantage of that Asian liquidity range sweep. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.